A car is, well, it was part of your family, you know, it wasn't just something that you hopped in like a mode to get to A to B, it was, it was part of your family. And this car here, you know, it's got the scars, the paint's worn, you know, the upholstery's a bit, bit ripped or whatever. It's telling you a story and, and you're adding more to it. And I think that cars that are locked up and, and it's, while it's good to see those cars, those cars deserve to be driving around and being used. Yeah, okay, it adds a bit more, I guess, uh, uh, wear and tear to the vehicle and a few more looks and stuff, but that's just part of it, you know. I think the car has a soul and it's a happy car, you know. You hop in it and it's just cruise along, everything's humming, it's, it's loving life. And I mean, it's it sat in a shed for 30, 40 odd years. And I think the last place it wants to be is sitting in another shed for another 30 or 40 years, you know. Cars, man. Cars, cars, cars. When I was, I don't know, four or five years old, my, my, my dad had a, a 38 Deluxe Coupe. I always remember that car at the end of the driveway, and I'd run down the driveway and would jump in that car and he'd take me to where we were going. That just slowly progressed. 99, 2000, um, a good friend of mine, Mike Harrison, but his, his dad was a hot rodder through and through. He passed away and left it to Mike, and he had a 57 Ford or Chevrolet, and uh, we used to cruise around in that, and he bought CK Deluxe and it was issue one, two, and three. And in this magazine, there was a guy who was in a little channeled roads to pick up, and he was in, a, in, a, in like a, a car park of some sort, some goggles on, just going berserk in this thing. And this was like a go-kart, but a, a car. And I just thought, holy hell, this is something that we need to do, you know what I mean? And I think like in that magazine now, you know, those guys that built those cars, were sort of at the same stage as us, you know, they were just doing what they could afford. You buy and sell vehicles and you sort of end up and then you end up with, well, you, hopefully you end up with what you want, you know what I mean? You know, we were kids, you played with cars, you mucked around with cars, you'd go to the beach in your car, took your girlfriend out on a date in the car, you know what I mean? Like, it was all around cars and it's just never really stopped, you know? Ford Model A, um, it was for sale in Maryland in the States. It was pretty cheap and had a bit of a, a picture there that was a little bit hard to make out and stuff, but I decided to sort of pursue it. Emailed the, the lady and she sent through a couple of more worse pictures of, of the car. Managed to do a deal, taught how to use PayPal, and uh, the car turned up in New Zealand. It had Hawaiian plates, which uh, was a little bit strange, but didn't take too much notice. It turned out that uh, the car was sold brand new from the Universal Motor Company in Honolulu, which was the Ford dealership of the time. Under the seat, cleaning it, there was a few little receipts from parts and stuff. And that's how I sort of decided to call it the Universal Roadster, you know. And um, yeah, we just went from there. A buddy of mine, uh, he, he had already purchased a, a 32.5 window from a guy in Hawaii and stuff, and he was looking at buying his Roadster, which was another early 50s hot rod. Um, he got me to go with him over to Hawaii. We went over there for a, a whirlwind 23-hour trip. There we met the guy that owned it, Lane, and um, I got talking to him about the Universal Motor Company, and I said I had a, a Model A Roadster there. He went on to tell me that he had a, a Scott Blower that was sold brand new from the Universal Motor Company as well, and he had it in the crate sitting in his office, which we sort of thought that was a bit hard case and, and that. But anyways, a few beers later, we went and had a look, and sure enough, here was this Scott Blower sitting in the crate with uh, the Universal tags and all the paperwork with it. You had to have it. It was meant to be. Eh? You believe in fate, that's it, right there. If you're into traditional cars, I guess it's every guy's dream to have that old car that's found in the barn or under the basement, you know, and they pull it out and, and it's an old hot rod built from the 50s and the interior's in pretty good nick and the paint's not too bad. Been going up and down, you know, to the States and looking around for sort of like the last 15 years and never really came across those cars and then when this car come up it seemed the, the perfect candidate to A, turn that car into. You know, it's got the original old paint, the, the car's telling a story and then hopefully what I've done is just added a bit more to the story and it's next progression as, as an automobile, you know. It's got the flathead, it's got the, the Scott Blower, it's got the Cadillac transmission, the, the Halibrand quick change, you know, it's all those parts that when, you know, you're reading all those stories about all those cars that's what they had, you know. Pretty cool that you were able to still build that car, like here we are, like in you know, 2015, 16, 17. Those parts are available and, and you can still do it, you know. Um, Rocket, you know, it was started with Jeff Klein and myself. 
um, and then and then Gary come on board as well, and and then Paul and and that and the other guys that have been here, and you know it's a good time, man. It's you know we get to work on the stuff, we get to look after, take care of these cars, we get to build them for people. We put a lot of time, effort, blood, sweat, tears, have the arguments and all that sort of jazz, and uh, we just hope that the, that the guys appreciate it. We've been pretty lucky. I think so far to be able to do what we're doing and hopefully it continues you know we think we do a good job so if you do a good job you're always kind of busy and you'll always have work so um, that's sort of what we'll stick with and, and what we'll go with you know. If the owner is uh, doing it and is 100% into what they're doing and they understand what they're doing then they'll have a good car. It's when they sort of go from point A to point B to point C and then back to A and then they need to have a plan they need to stick with it and it doesn't matter if it's a street rider, any car, anything, you know what I mean? Just get your plan and run with it, and that's what you're doing, and just stick to it until the end. Some do it, some don't, but it's just part of the, the journey, I guess. I think the world's too fast. You know, you need to slow down and appreciate what's going on around you. You take an old car for a drive, you know you've driven an old car, you know what I mean? And that's, I think that, that's just what some people need to do sometimes. I think you just get caught up and the whole rat race of going to work, coming home, you're doing this, you're doing that, everything's 100 mile an hour. And I think with the old cars, it takes you back and it just, just puts you in check a little bit. Uh, it's a bit of a privilege to be able to actually have the car and, and look after it. Hopefully, when one day whoever ends up with the car, hopefully they look after it and appreciate it as much as what we or what I have and our family have. So, you yeah, know, it's cool, man. It's a cool car. Good times.